it's peak time. And every 30 seconds, another load of human cargo either touches down or takes off. More flights are handled here than London Heathrow, Leonardo da Vinci Airport in Rome, and Hong Kong International combined. Making O'Hare International Airport in Chicago the busiest global pit stop in human history. In one year, more than 65 million people pass through. That's more than twice the population of Canada. And get this, O'Hare is so big, it has its own freeway overpass. We have six runways, and of course that equates to 12 because depending on the direction of the wind, uh, one runway can be actually two. We try and set up configurations where we land on two runways. When traffic demands, we have a third arrival runway. And we also try at the same time to get two or three separate departure runways so they don't intermingle. As a key player in world destinations, O'Hare needs a monumental layout. Feast your eyes on this blueprint. The complex itself occupies 7,700 acres. Four terminal buildings house gates for 162 airplanes. The volume, we're, we're simply very, very busy. The International Terminal is 100 acres in size. It greets people in 17 different languages depending on what flights are arriving from where. Part of the reason for O'Hare's mind-boggling schedule is that it's the hub for two major airlines, United and American. Amy Tober works American's Control Center. This is really the heart of what goes on for American Airlines. Flight attendant Heller, call extension 66415. We have a lot of decision-making ability up here. Uh, we have to take into consideration uh, our passengers, our bags, uh, the cargo loads. Uh, we want to impact the rest of the operation as least as possible with the decisions we make. We have a lot of international departures and arrivals. We have to worry about getting things and trips and passengers on time out of here so they can come back from Europe on time. So really, it's kind of the domino effect. If we do something wrong or we make a poor decision, it will ripple through the rest of the system for American. American handles about 1,000 flights a day at this one stop, but that's just a fraction of the action. When you gaze out across the Chicago skyline, you can't see the directional routes. The air paths are invisible to the naked eye. And on bad nights, it's, it's a pressure cooker. Runways are riddled with the signs of countless tires touching down. But at O'Hare, turning chaos into order is the order of the day. So how many flights file in and out? Typical day, probably about 2,000. That means about 180,000 passengers, enough to fill New York City's Madison Square Garden nine times. Last year, O'Hare counted about 900,000 takeoffs and landings, making this the nation's central nervous system of air travel. What happens here pretty much dominates what happens throughout the country, and it's because of our location. We're right in the middle of the country. Peter Salmon is the assistant air traffic manager, and he spends his days perched inside this man-made eagle's nest. Uh, floor space-wise, it has to be the biggest. It's simply huge inside, and it's 260 feet uh, to the very top, about probably 245, 250 at eye level. It has the largest cab of any tower ever built by the FAA. A $28 million skyscraping achievement this is one space needle that serves up more than just a view. It's the world's busiest control tower. Smack dab in the middle of one of the hairiest flight zones in the skies. Snow's a tough one. There's a lot of runway closures. And if it's windy, they'll clean a runway and the snow will blow right back out on the runway. So they're pulling their hair out. There's times in the control tower, the controllers can't see the runways. 
Uh, they can't see the structure we're standing on. So they have the, uh, the most sophisticated ground radar that is in existence. At O'Hare, the radar is the X-ray to the runways. And their high-tech fortune teller to the skies is a system of the most advanced meteorology equipment on Earth. Machines that can predict bad weather before it hits and find gust fronts before the planes hit them. Pretty handy when jets are carving their way through the airspace above a place dubbed the Windy City. You can put all the great equipment in you want. If your human beings aren't A number one, the system won't work. But it does, because of the human. I consider the people up there the best tower controllers in the world. As you can imagine, navigating all those flights is a daunting task. But at O'Hare, that's just a fraction of an operation teeming with activity, a virtual city about the size of Athens, Greece. With miles of sidewalk, tarmacs, and hallways, thousands of people handling hundreds of jobs for millions of passengers. From ticket takers, to luggage checkers, to people who sort the bags, load the bags, check the planes, pump the fuel, dump the, uh, you know, there are sweepers, sweeping machine drivers. That's called a green machine, and it sucks. This place actually packs away about 1,500 tons of garbage in a week. How'd you like to drag that out to the end of your driveway every Tuesday morning? But that's not all. There's the people who direct the action on the tarmac, the lift drivers, the tram operators, the people who fly the passengers, serve the passengers, the paper pushers, the chefs, the short order cooks, the cashiers, the ones on constant standby ready to swing into action at a moment's notice. Then there's the people who mow the grass. And the lights, lights as far as the eye can see. And people who keep those lights blinking to the rhythm of an airport that's always thumping with action. Roughly, there's about 10,000 lights out here. John Flaherty is an electrician, and this is his year-round Christmas display. With planes coming and going, the light show never ends, and neither does the upkeep. Hundreds of them a day. Uh, all three shifts, we check them, operations check them, we go out and change them, uh, day shift, afternoon shift, and night shift. Edge lights, the runway, the taxiway, the center lines, um, touchdown, touchdown zone, penalty box, holding areas. Sounds like a hockey rink, but the names fit. The penalty box, that's a uh, name they give areas out here where a plane can go sit for a while until they get uh, clearance to move. Every once in a while we get a lightning strike that uh, hits our lights and knocks out anywhere from 10 to uh, 210 lights in a row. With 10,000 lights, you've got uh, hundreds going out a day. You know, and you, you just stay with it. The airport, the FAA demands it. And you just basically have to stay on top of it. It's a never-ending job. All those lights are critical to safety. And even though the risk of danger at O'Hare is low, being ready for action is first and foremost. O'Hare is so big, it has its own fire department. There are 42 firefighters on staff 24 hours a day. They practice dousing flames on this mock-up jet nearly every day of the year. They have enough hose on site to stretch an entire mile and could hook those hoses up at any one of 780 fire hydrants. It's a massive effort to make things safe for a huge population. But when you're talking about a daily gathering of some 180,000 travelers, safety isn't your only concern. There are appetites to think about, from pizza outlets to hot dog vendors, to people who prep the food for in-flight dining. Pop is we sell probably 150,000 cans a day. Of course, with all that pop, we also need uh, about 20,000 pounds of ice to go with it. Chef Willie Reichmuth 